I want to move on. This next question comes from the public through the bipartisan Open Debate Coalition's online forum where Americans submitted questions that generated millions of votes. This question involves WikiLeaks' release of purported excerpts of Secretary Clinton's paid speeches, which she has refused to release, and one line in particular in which you, Secretary Clinton, purportedly say you need both a public and private position on certain issues. So, two from Virginia asks, is it okay for politicians to be two-faced? Is it acceptable for a politician to have a private stance on issues? Secretary Clinton, well, your two minutes. Right. As, as I recall, that was uh, something I said about Abraham Lincoln uh, after having seen the wonderful Steven Spielberg movie called Lincoln. It was a master class watching President Lincoln get the Congress to approve the 13th Amendment. It was principled and it was strategic. And I was making the point that it is hard sometimes to get the Congress to do what you want to do, and you have to keep working at it. And yes, President Lincoln was trying to convince some people, he used some arguments, convincing other people, he used other arguments. That uh, was a great, uh, uh, I thought, a great uh, display of presidential leadership. But you know, let's talk about what's really going on here, Martha, because our intelligence community just came out and said in the last few days that the Kremlin, meaning Putin and the Russian government, are directing the attacks, the hacking on American accounts to influence our election. And WikiLeaks is part of that, as are other sites where the Russians hack information. We don't even know if it's accurate information. And then they put it out. We have never in the history of our country been in a situation where an adversary, a foreign power, is working so hard to influence the outcome of the election. And believe me, they're not doing it to get me elected. They're doing it to try to influence the election for Donald Trump. Now, maybe because he has praised Putin, maybe because he says he agrees with a lot of what Putin wants to do, maybe because he wants to do business in Moscow, I don't know the reasons, but we deserve answers, and we should demand that Donald release all of his tax returns so that people can see what are the entanglements and the financial and relationships we're going to get to that, later. that he has Secretary with Clinton, Russians and you're other out of time. foreign powers. Well, I think I should Mr. Trump. because it's so ridiculous. Look, now she's blaming, she got caught in a total lie. Her papers went out to all her friends at the banks, Goldman Sachs, and everybody else. And she said things, WikiLeaks, that just came out. And she lied. Now she's blaming the lie on the late, great Abraham Lincoln. That's one that I have. <laughs> okay, honest Abe. Honest Abe never lied. That's the good thing. That's the big difference between Abraham Lincoln and you. That's a big, big difference. We're talking about some difference. But as far as other elements of what she was saying, I don't know, Putin. I think it would be great if we got along with Russia because we could fight ISIS together as an example, but I don't know Putin. But I notice anytime anything wrong happens, they like to say the Russians, the Russians, she doesn't know if it's the Russians doing the hacking. Maybe there is no hacking, but they always blame Russia. And the reason they blame Russia is because they think they're trying to tarnish me with Russia. I know nothing about Russia. I know, I know about Russia, but I know nothing about the inner workings of Russia. I don't deal there. I have no businesses. There. I have no loans from Russia. I have a very, very great balance sheet, so great that when I did the old post office on Pennsylvania Avenue, the United States government, because of my balance sheet, which they actually know very well, chose me to do the old post office between the White House and Congress chose me to do the old post office. One of the primary things, in fact, perhaps the primary thing was balance sheet. But I have no loans with Russia. You could go to the United States government and they would probably tell you that because they know my sheet very well in order to get that development. I had to have. Now, the taxes are a very simple thing. As soon as I have, first of all, I pay hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes. Many of our friends took bigger deductions. Warren Buffett 
took a massive deduction. Uh, Soros, who's a friend of hers, took a massive deduction. Many of the people that are giving her all this money that she can do many more commercials than me gave her, took massive deductions. I pay hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes, but, but as soon as my routine audit's finished, I'll release my returns. I'll be very proud to. They're Thank actually you, Mr. Trump. Cool. We've got a, uh, we're on a turn, actually, the topic of taxes. We have a question from Spencer Moss. Spencer? Good evening. Uh, my question is, what specific tax provisions will you change to ensure the wealthiest Americans pay their fair share in taxes? Mr. Trump, you have two minutes. Well, one thing I do is get rid of carried interest. The, one of the greatest provisions for people like me, to be honest with you, I give up a lot when I run because I knock out the tax code. And she could have done this years ago, by the way. She's a United States, she was a United States Senator. She complains that Donald Trump took advantage of the tax code. Well, why didn't she change it? Why didn't you change it when you were a Senator? The reason you didn't is that all your friends take the same advantage that I do, and I do. You have provisions in the tax code that, frankly, we could change. But you wouldn't change it because all of these people give you the money so you can take negative ads on Donald Trump. But, and I say that about a lot of things. You know, I've, I've heard Hillary complaining about so many different things over the years. I wish you had done this. Or, but she's been there for 30 years. She's been doing this stuff. She never changed. And she never will change. She never will change. We're getting rid of carried interest provisions. I'm lowering taxes, actually, because I think it's so important for corporations, because we have corporations leaving massive corporations and little ones. Little ones can't form. We're getting rid of regulations, which goes hand in hand with the lowering of the taxes. But we're bringing the tax rate down from 35 percent to 15 percent. We're cutting taxes for the middle class, and I will tell you, we are cutting them big league for the middle class. And I will tell you, Hillary Clinton is raising your taxes, folks. You can look at me. She's raising your taxes really high. And what that's going to do is a disaster for the country. But she is raising your taxes, and I'm lowering your taxes. That in itself is a big difference. We are going to be thriving again. We have no growth in this country. There's no growth. If China has a GDP of 7%, it's like a national catastrophe. We're down at 1%, and that's like no growth. And we're going lower, in my opinion. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that our taxes are so high, just about the highest in the world. And I'm bring, bringing them down to one of the lower in the world. And I think it's so important, one of the most important things we can do. But she is raising everybody's taxes massively. Secretary Clinton, you have two minutes. The question was, uh, what specific tax provisions will you change to ensure the wealthiest Americans pay their fair share of taxes? Well, everything you've heard just now from Donald is not true. I'm, I'm sorry I have to keep saying this, but he lives in an alternative reality. And it is sort of amusing to hear somebody who hasn't paid federal income taxes in maybe 20 years talking about what he's going to do, but I'll tell you what he's going to do. His plan will give the wealthy and corporations the biggest tax cuts they've ever had, more than the Bush tax cuts by at least a factor of two. Donald always takes care of Donald and people like Donald, and this would be a massive gift. And indeed, the way that he talks about his tax cuts would end up raising taxes on middle class families, millions of middle class families. Now, here's what I want to do. I have said nobody who makes less than $250,000 a year, and that's the vast majority of Americans, as you know, will have their taxes raised because I think we've got to go where the money is. And the money is with people who've taken advantage of every single break in the tax code. And yes, when I was a senator, I did vote to close corporate loopholes. I voted to close, I think, one of the loopholes he took advantage of when he claimed a billion dollar uh, loss that enabled him to avoid paying taxes. I want to have a tax on people who are making a million dollars. It's called the Buffett Rule. Yes, Warren Buffett is the one who's gone out and said, somebody like him should not be paying a lower tax rate than his secretary. I want to have a surcharge on incomes above five million. We have to make up for lost times because I want to invest in you. I want to invest in hardworking families. And I think it's been unfortunate, but it's happened, that since the Great Recession, the gains have all gone to the top. And we need to reverse that. People like Donald who paid zero in taxes, zero for our vets, zero for our military, zero for health and education. That is wrong, Thank and you, we're Secretary. going to make sure that nobody, no corporation and no individual,
can get away without paying his fair share to I want to give you our country. Mr. Trump, I want to give the chance to respond. Sure. I just want to tell our viewers what she's referring to. In the last month, taxes were the number one issue on Facebook for the first time in the campaign. The New York Times published three pages of your 1995 tax returns. They show you claimed a $916 million loss, which means you could have avoided paying personal federal income taxes for years. You've said you pay state taxes, employee taxes, real estate taxes, property taxes. You have not answered, though, a simple question. Did you use that $916 million loss to avoid paying personal federal income taxes? For of years? course I do. Of course I do. And so do all of her donors or most of her donors. I know many of her donors. Her donors took massive tax write-offs. So a lot of my, excuse me, a, a lot of my write-off was depreciation and other things that Hillary, as a senator, allowed, and she'll always allow it because the people that give her all this money, they want it. That's why. See, I understand the tax code better than anybody that's ever run for president. Hillary Clinton, and it's extremely complex. Hillary Clinton has friends that want all of these provisions, including they want the carried interest provision, which is very important to Wall Street people, but they really want the carried interest provision, which I believe Hillary's leaving. It's very interesting why she's leaving carried interest. But I will tell you that, number one, I pay tremendous numbers of taxes. I absolutely used it, and so did Warren Buffett, and so did George Soros, and so did many of the other people that Hillary is uh, getting money from. Now, I won't mention their names because they're rich, but they're not famous, so we won't make them famous. Can, okay? you, can you say how many years you have avoided paying personal federal income taxes? No, but I, I pay tax, and I pay federal tax, too. But I have a write-off. A lot of it's depreciation, which is a wonderful charge. I love depreciation. You know, she's given it to us. Hey, if she had a problem, for 30 years she's been doing this, Anderson. I say it all the time. She talks about health care. Why didn't she do something about it? She talks about taxes. Why didn't she do something about it? She doesn't do anything about anything other than talk. With her, it's all talk and no action. In the past, and, and again... Bernie Sanders, it's really bad judgment. She has made bad judgment not only on taxes, she's made bad judgments on Libya, on Syria, on Iraq. I mean, her and Obama, whether you like it or not, the way they got out of Iraq, the vacuum they've left, that's why ISIS formed in the first place. They started from that little area, and now they're in 32 different nations, Hillary. Congratulations. Secretary, Great job. Won't you be able to respond, Secretary Clinton? Well, here we go again. I've been uh, in favor of getting rid of carried interest for years, um, starting when I was a senator from New York. But that's not the point here. Why didn't you, you know, do it? Why didn't you do it? Allow her to respond. Because I was a senator with a Republican president. Oh, really? I will be the you president. You could have done it. If you, were an, effective, uh, if you exactly were an effective right. senator, you could have done it. If you were an effective senator, you could have done it. But you were not an effective senator. Please allow her senator. to respond. She didn't interrupt you. You know, under our Constitution, presidents have something called veto power. Look, he has now said repeatedly, 30 years this and 30 years that. So let me talk about my 30 years in public service. I'm very glad to do so. Eight million kids every year have health insurance because when I was first lady, I worked with Democrats and Republicans to create the children's health insurance program. Hundreds of thousands of kids now have a chance to be adopted because I worked to change our adoption and foster care system. After 9-11, I went to work with Republican mayor, governor, and president to rebuild New York and to get health care for our first responders who were suffering because they had run toward danger and gotten sickened by it. Hundreds of thousands of National Guard and Reserve members have health care because of work that I did, and children have safer medicines because I was able to pass a law that required the dosing to be more carefully done. When I was Secretary of State, I went around the world advocating for our country, but also advocating for women's rights to make sure that women had a decent chance to have a better life and negotiated a treaty with Russia to lower nuclear weapons. 400 pieces of legislation have my name on it as a sponsor or co-sponsor when I was a senator for eight years. I worked very hard and was very proud to be re-elected in New York by an even bigger margin than I had been elected the first time. 
And as president, I will take that work, that bipartisan work, that finding common ground, Thank because you. you have to be able to get along with people to get things done in Washington. Thank you, Secretary. And I've proven that I can. And for 30 years, I've produced results for Thank people. Thank you, Secretary. We're going to move on to Syria. Both of you have mentioned that. Well, you said a lot of things. That we, you, were you, I mean, I think we should we can, be allowed no, to Mr. maybe. No, Mr. Trump, we're going to go on. This is about the audience. Mr. Senator, Trump, we're going to move on.